Live from the JSA Podcast Studio, presenting Data Movers, showcasing the leaders behind the headlines in the telecom and data center infrastructure industry. Welcome to our new podcast series, Data Movers. I'm your host, Jamie Scotto Kataya, founder and CEO of JSA. And along with me, my co-host, my uh, my colleague in craziness, uh, top B2B social influencer, Evan Christel. Hey everyone, we're still at home. Uh, <laughs> thanks, welcome to Data Movers, where we sit down with some of the most influential folks in today's leading teleco <laughs> telecom and data center world, supporting the network infrastructure requirements of this new normal. Jamie, speaking of new normal, um, now that we have a vaccine on the horizon, what are you thinking in terms of you or your, you and your team? Are you going to go back to uh, some sort of office environment? Well, I think uh, it's so, it, it's a, a sense of hope. You know, this 90-year-old uh, woman getting her the very first vaccination, uh, there's, there's definite hope on the horizon that we're going to go back to some new normalcy. But, um, uh, but JSA, we've always been virtual for the past, we're, we're going to celebrate 16 years, actually, January 1. So... 16 years, um, we've been virtual and we're, we're all about that, uh, you know, with the right people, you can absolutely successfully work from home um, and, and giving the, the right hires and, and the right tools and technologies that it's, it's actually uh, potentially even more rewarding and satisfying uh, to do so. So we're, we're that model anyway, but what about you? Are you anxious to get back into any form of uh, on-site uh, action? Technically, I, I was intrigued by um, uh, the Hawaiian offer to pay for your airfare if you fly there to work remotely. So maybe I'll, uh, I'll consider my uh, moving the, the underground bunker to Hawaii. But okay. um, let, let's see how that plays out. I imagine you can't dig too deep into that island soil, though, right? So your bunker would be like... I, the bunker will be on the beach. But... Um, <laughs> Let's stop, uh, maybe stop fantasizing here and get on with our guest. Yes, and it's a, it's a fabulous, fabulous guest, which I'm really excited to introduce you guys to. Um, today, we are welcoming David Johnson. He is, of course, the president of Comstar Technologies. David, welcome to our show. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Just a, just a great, interesting show you guys are running here, so I'm excited to be here. Excited to have you, David. So tell me, you're in the Philadelphia area. Uh, most important questions first, where's the best place to find a chili feast, uh, 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 Philly cheesesteak in the Philadelphia area? That's like a tongue twister. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting que question for me. I actually, um, at, you know, <laughs> I actually started before I worked at, at Comstar, I worked at a place making cheesesteaks. So I'm, my, my answer is going to be biased. Um, and it's a place that not many people have heard of. It's called the Pepper Mill in Westchester. So if you're really looking for, for the best place to get a cheesesteak in the Philadelphia region, I would I would say Pepper Mill is the, the number one. And, and it's I am Googling it right now. So I'm going to uh, add it to my uh, visits when I'm next in the Philly area. But more about you. Um, you've been at Comstar Technologies for almost two decades. Tell us about that career path. That's quite impressive these days. I've never actually heard somebody say it in those terms before. Two decades makes me kind of re reevaluate my entire life right now. But uh, um, yeah, two decades, I guess. So um, as I mentioned, I, uh, you know, oddly enough, I, I worked at a cheesesteak place before I came to the Pepper Mill. And um, I actually worked with a high school friend at the at the cheesesteak place called the Pepper Mill. And um, while I was there, he, he, he came in and said, hey, I, there's this company I work for. It's a technology company. Uh, we're really small right now. There were there were seven employees. Uh, we, we, we have a ton of work happening. We're growing quite a bit. I, I think you'd like working here. So um, I, I left the, the line cook uh, career path that I was on <laughs> and, I, and I moved over to Comstar as a cabling technician. So my first job, um, you know, kind of official career path job was, um, was a cabling technician at Comstar. So, you know, we, we would go into construction sites and, and, and install test uh, category six, category five E back then, uh, category six cables. Um, so that's really what kind of brought me into this field. Uh, I was, I was pretty terrible at it, honestly, to begin with. I, um, 
I don't know why they asked me to work at, at the cheesesteak or the cabling uh, yeah, or both. I'm really good at making cheesesteaks. Uh, okay, okay. Really well, let's just clarify. Oh. <laughs> no, but I was not a great cabling technician. I, I really had no craftsmanship. I never I barely knew to, knew how to use a drill. But I was in a pretty good learning environment with a lot of really supportive people and a really good team. So um, that's kind of where the journey began. And the thing I liked about what I was doing, um, you know, there was challenges to it. I was learning all the time and it kept evolving. We would go, the size of the jobs would get bigger. The types of technologies we were, we were involved with would change. And that was, that's just the way that I am. I'd like to continuously learn. And that, that position really provided me that, that opportunity. So um, I moved from, or not moved from, but you know, when you're an eight person company, everybody does everything. I mean, I, I would, I would be in the field and then I would come back and, and manage the warehouse at night, clean everything up, organize it. Um, and then I, then I kind of moved a little bit more into the business side, but I was still in the field quite a bit. So uh, that, at, I don't remember the timeline there, but let's just call it 2005, 2006. I got involved a little bit more in the client meetings, um, quoting projects, designing projects. Uh, and again, we were small. So it was, you know, there was probably three or four of us on the cabling side of the business. And I kind of, we, we did everything, you know, I would, I would quote a project, um, order the materials for the project. I would, I would go and finish the data room a lot of times, like build out the data room. And then I would invoice the project. Um, so I, have, I literally saw the entire um, cycle of a, of a client experience and, and internally, operationally, how these things work. So, um, so over time, we kept growing and that allowed us to, um, and, and at the same time, we were growing on the telephony side of the business. So, you know, I was kind of growing the cabling, what we ended up on the infrastructure side, and the founder of the business was growing the telephony side. And we had a, we never talked about it, but we had a little competition going on to see who could, who could kind of leapfrog each other. Um, so, they were both growing really well, which allowed us to add additional resources. And, and you know, again, I, I'm not exactly sure of the timeline because I didn't, uh, you know, this, I didn't write my autobiography yet. But um, uh, around, let's say, 2010, it really kind of to, 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 to find the scale that we were looking for. I thought it was important to step out of the field operations, move into more of a business role where, you know, I was I was doing a lot more um, uh, client requirement meetings, designing projects, and moving us into audiovisual building security at the same time. Around right around that right around that same time, maybe a year later or so, on the telephony side, they were evolving from a premise telephony company to a to a hosted telephony company. So the business was evolving internally in in, in the two different kind of departments or divisions that we had. Um, so, you know, that that journey kind of led us to 2015, 2016. And um, that's when the owner who had been in telephony since he was 19 years old was ready to move on and do some other things. So um, at that point, uh, I took over uh, the, a COO role and um, started running the operations of, of, of the business. And he moved a little more out of the business, still was involved from a strategic um, envision, envision type of um, role, but but he wasn't involved in the day to day as much. Um, so, probably two years after that, he moved on. Um, we were we were acquired by a wonderful, great partner, um, private equity company called Wincove. Um, Kevin Flounders moved down to uh, Charleston, South Carolina, and I took over as president of the business uh, in, I think 2018. So, um, it's been, it's been about 18 to 24 months where I've, uh, where I've been president of the company. Um, now, now involved more in the strategy and vision and direction of the business that, that we're going. And I imagine that, that beautiful path and all the experience that you've, you, you, uh, received and, and, uh, put into action, uh, over the years has really provided you, uh, the fodder to become a better leader in the organization. Where, where do you see the organization heading in the future? Yeah, we're definitely on a, on a, on a path of growth. Um, and, and growth for us isn't, you know, there, there's, there's, um, there's a revenue element to that, certainly, but growth for us is really operational maturity and, and, and opportunity for the employees that work here. And I, and I think that's what's one of the things when I talk about the path that I was on from a career perspective, I had direct line of sight into the growth of the business and the benefits that I had from that. But, but more importantly, 
I, there was a lot of potential for growth for me from a career perspective. So I, I, I liked where I was working. I liked the people I worked with and I had opportunity for growth. And that's really what we're trying to emulate for all the employees at Comstar. So our growth mindset is really about operational maturity, creating opportunity for the employees um, inside of the company. And the results of that are going to be revenue growth. And, 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 we, and we have an overlapped acquisition strategy that we're looking to, we have been implementing, but really take to the next level over the next uh, you know, 12 months. That's tremendous. So you've seen a lot of changes over those uh, years. Um, what are some of the most significant changes you've seen in the data center space and uh, related industries? Yeah, that is it. it, it and, and every field, I'm, I'm sure there's um, there's significant change. But in the technology field that we're in, I think that's probably been some of the most abrupt. Um, you know, when you look at the telephony side of our business, um, really, you know, when you, the years 1980 to 2010, let's call it, let's round up a little bit. There was no there was no telephony expert, like, except for our, a, a, a vendor like us, like everybody had to use a vendor like us to help them, help them buy the solutions that they needed. Now it's everywhere. It's like every, every, every day you probably see some sort of unified communication as a service advertisement or something like that. So the, the big evolution I think has been, you know, it went from like hardware focus to limited knowledge um, to software focus, to uh, an abundance of knowledge, infinite options. And um, so I, I think that's been kind of the, the biggest evolution um, in, in that industry uh, that, that I've seen is, is really it moving from hardware to software, but elements of it being commoditized and elements of it being specialized all at the same time. And going from that hardware to software, what do you see on the horizon regarding uh, the technology growth and that you're currently involved in. So I, I think what, and this kind of gets into the into the further evolution that, that we've seen happening. So, you know, there's been a the word convergence was was really really popular. We'll call it ten years ago, and and really that meant from a um, hardware standpoint and, and some some software in the background, everything was kind of converging into the network. Everything was kind of becoming data. Uh, right. Cameras were becoming data. Uh, telephony was becoming data. Um, everything was kind of converging into the IT space. Uh, so I think we're at that point where that convergence has happened on the hardware side, clearly. I think what's next is is it's going to happen on the application side. So, you know, you, you see the way that there's these silos that are, that are the boundaries of those silos are starting to come down. So you have your unified communication as a service platform, whatever it is, Teams 8x8 any number of things, and you have your, um, your CRM, let's say. I think what we're going to start seeing is not just, not just linking those two things together, but those two things literally overlapping. So they're one in the same. Whether you acquire them, you have two different bills, maybe, that's fine. But really, really, you're going to see a true integration at the application layer, where it's not just that they, they talk to each other. They literally exist as one from the, from the end user experience. I think that's really what we're at the forefront of right now. Um, you've been successful in that. So what's your philosophy? What can you share on how to build an amazing client relationship over time? Yeah. Um, you know, as I, as I kind of talked about that journey and, and as I was thinking about that journey, kind of reflecting on it, um, for whatever reason, premonition, luck, it, just an innate kind of thought, really early on, again, for whatever reason, I, I, I kind of pictured myself as an employee of our clients. And when I was on there, you know, I, I, what, I was barely in the office. I was almost out in the field. I was probably out in the field 80% of the time. So it was really easy to kind of see it that way. But that really put me at a, at a perspective where I am, I am our client's employee, or, or at the time I was our client's employee. And that didn't just mean that I was there to do what they told me to do, but I was actually there to advise them and say, you know, I may, I see what you're trying to do or what you're asking me to do, but what's the ultimate objective? Um, I think that's the key is, is, is really, really becoming an employee of your clients and, and really advising them on, on, you know, what, whatever it is, you know, nobody knows better than us how to align 
their business objectives with technology solutions. That's really what we're experts at. So once you kind of consider yourself an employee of this client or potential client, it becomes a lot easier to, to, to merge those two things together. So that's, I would say, really put yourself not just in your client's shoes, but like you literally work there. Yeah, well said, well said. We, we certainly try to do that here at JSA and and this digital transformation has has enabled that too. Um, so it's funny how what you're doing uh, every day has really emboldened other uh, business models as well to uh, be their clients, uh, employee and partner. Um, now to get to that rapid fire section, which I love, this is where we just throw out a, a few phrases and questions for you. And you can just tell us the first thing that pops to your mind, pops into okay. your mind. Yep. Uh, so, okay, David, do you have any pets? Yeah, I have a, a dog named Clark. Oh, Clark. Love it. Yep. How many cups of coffee do you have each day? One like clockwork, one 20 ounce coffee in the morning. You need to up your game here. Come on. This is uh, yeah. it's the coffee world. I'm one of those people that I could drink coffee at nine o'clock at night and go to sleep. So I don't know. I love it. Uh, when we already know this one, your first job. Well, was it your first job? Uh, cheese steaks or? No, no. Um, that was probably my fifth job or so, let's say. Uh, my first job was, um, this is kind of a weird one. Uh I would go on when there were bad snowstorms, when it used to snow in Philadelphia, which it doesn't do too often anymore. But but when I would when there were bad snowstorms, I would go on an oil truck and deliver oil to people's houses. And I wasn't I was only 14 or 15, 14, 15. I wasn't driving or anything, but I, would, I was actually the guy that would take the hose and lug it through the snow into the people's houses and connect it up to their tank. Um, so that was technically my first job, but it was only when there was bad snowstorms. Which... Wow. Kids these days have it easy, or at least my kids do. So. Um, and your favorite dessert? Oh, man. Um, I guess cheesecake. Seldomly cheesecake. Yeah, nice, nice. And your most used emoji? No emojis. I am. Come on. You got to get with the program here. That and, and get on Twitter. Those are the two uh, directives. Actually, as a kind of inside joke inside my family, because I'm, I'm a technology guy, but you know, there's millennials and things like that. I'll actually type out the emoji. So I'll write smiley face, wine glass, confetti, or something like that. Just to. <laughs> I like it. I know I refuse to say uh, venti when I go to Starbucks. I'm like, no, I, I am, I know small, medium, large. I'm not going to let them market me and change my, my diction. Yeah, the big uh, one. That's yeah, right. I, I hear you. <laughs> Stick to your conviction. <laughs> <laughs> I've been known to do that. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and so in closing, I just want to say it's been such an honor, David, to have you here. Your leadership over at Comstar has been extraordinary. We are so proud to see you uh, make those headlines that you've been making um, and, and your whole company just coming together. Um, and especially during this crazy COVID world. Um, really making a difference and keeping those clients connected and um, and running so so efficiently thanks to your guidance. So, yeah, I appreciate it. We have a great team over here. I mean, it, it just uh, to deal with the things that we've had to deal with. We were not a remote working company. Um, we, we made that transition in real time to have a team that's capable, you know, culturally to, to handle something like that is pretty incredible. So it's, it's really been a great team effort. Well, congratulations. And as soon as the pandemic's over, we're looking forward to coming down to Philly and having a cheesesteak and some cheesecake. So the worst possible meal you could you could eat on the planet. But we're going to do it, yeah. and we look forward to it. We'll do it live. We'll video it. We could have a taste. <laughs> yeah. Which one should we see if I'm right about what is the best Philadelphia cheesesteak? I know because you know I have uh, old school. Uh, fellow friends who are like there's there's a bridge you go under the bridge and there's your cheesesteak like classic philly cheesesteak guy and so uh, I guess, yeah oh, what is the name of that i've been there actually um i can't remember the name of it. i can't either I'll, I'll get back to you on that one but we have to taste test because you know people are passionate about this <laughs> yeah you'll see i'm, I'm definitely right on this one <laughs> And if you guys enjoyed today's Data Movers podcast, be sure to check out jsa.net slash podcast for upcoming Data Movers 
episodes. We release every other week on Wednesday morning. So please go ahead and check out the entire series. And in two weeks time, we will be releasing a new episode. That's January 13th. Oh my God, January 13th. That's hard to uh, imagine, but uh, thank God uh, this year is going to be behind us. So um, additionally, follow us on Twitter at Jay Scotto and Evan Kerstell and tweet us your favorite emoji and we'll catch you there. Yeah, absolutely. And and everybody uh, keep safe. Happy, happy new year. Happy holidays and happy networking. <laughs>